Welcome to The View from the Pew. My name is Reich Plekis, and today is the day that the Lord has made. We'll be right back right after this. Welcome to The View from a Pew.com and KTIA Radio 99.3 FM. I'm your host, Reich Plekis, each and every Wednesday and Thursday from here on out on The View from a Pew.com and KTIA at 3 p.m., Join me as I present the greatest gospel artists, small groups, musicians, pastors, authors, apostles, and more, bringing to you the clear and concise word of God locally. Join me, www.theviewfromapew.com and KTIA Radio 99.3 FM at 3 p.m. I hope you'll join me to spread the word powered by GFest and Webcast One Live.com. Welcome back to The View from Pew, inviting everybody to come out on December the 11th, Wednesday night to Morningstar Baptist Church, 3200 Lincoln Avenue here in Des Moines. That's south on 32nd Street off of Hickman to Christmas in Des Moines with Andre Crittenden and Kim Lewis. It's a free community concert event where Pastor Crawford, Alex Crawford of Morningstar Baptist Church, is inviting everybody and anybody into the house of the Lord that night for a, a Christmas community musical. That's a Wednesday? That is Wednesday. Next Wednesday. Next Wednesday. Okay. Are you coming? I don't know what I'm going to be doing next Wednesday. You know, if you came, I would, you know what? I would just drop down to the ground. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, Bob. I feel like I haven't seen you in a month again. Well, it's been a long time. It I don't know where been. you've been hiding. So I've, I've always been here. I've been here. Yeah. Yeah. I guess we miss each other in this we large, have. vast we studio. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the view from the pew. Oh, Bob, I just saw you through the camera there. We'll have to fix that on a station break. But anyway, today we are talking about WOG, women of God, women in business, overcoming obstacles, women in the month of December. We're now out of no shave November and we're into women of December. So anyway, we're here with my sisters in, in the, the kingdom, Deb Stucka, who's somebody I've known for quite some time. And uh, welcome, Deb. How That's are right. you? I'm good, thanks. You have to get close to that microphone. Thank you. I will. I'll raise it up. How's that? <laughs> yeah, that's good. Is that better? Good. I, I love her. She's going to get me <clears throat> afterwards. And also Debbie Moon Davis, who is with Ragamop Cleaning, and um, just another woman that uh, you and I have been following each other on Facebook for a while, but we've known each other in the retail market, and and um, your daughter cleaned one of my rental properties. And right. so we're just going to talk about what the Lord has done in your lives and your ministry and how you've been affected by what you've gone through, what you've come out of, but who you've affected as well. Amen. 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 Thank All you right. for having me. The, we, we, you're welcome for being here. It's fun. <laughs> Bob, it's you fun. can go ahead and just start stalking them right now. Uh, Deb Stuck at <laughs> S-T-O-K-K-A. Oh, okay. On Facebook. Huh? <laughs> on Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> And Debbie Moon Davis. Yeah, don't stalk us on the street. <laughs> <laughs> not Moon Zo not Moon Unit Zappa, but Debbie Moon Davis, okay? <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyway, welcome back to The View from the Pew. I'm Mike Plekis, your host. And we're just going to get right into it. And um, I, I'll start with you, uh, Deb Stucka. Uh, from, I've known you from Iowa Realty. known you, gosh, my daughter is 20. She'll be 21 in June. And I think I met you mm -hmm. when she was two. We did. And uh, you prayed me into my home. Awesome. Prayed me out of my home. <laughs> <laughs> prayed me out of the neighborhood. Uh, uh, yeah. Oh, we were neighbors. <laughs> yeah, we two were neighbors. Two blocks away, we were. Uh, just good thing you never saw me in the backyard in my pool <laughs> in all my glory <laughs> i always say if the white flag was on the fence don't come knocking so <laughs> anyway back to ministry um but you have been a, a person that um you were a single mom for a number of years I was. and um raised two children on your own for quite some time I did. and stepped in stepped out into ministry into um, a life story and, and God has picked you up, turned you around, set your feet on solid ground and gave most you of the time, most <laughs> of the time. Yeah. but, um, you have a story that, that affects change in people and, and you really do take a heart after ministry and everything <clears throat> that you do. And, and I don't say that lightly because you did pray me into a house at one time. Um, but you, um, you have a, a child that came through a, a drug addiction, dead drugs and alcohol. And you actually say that that was a life-changing experience, but it was a gift to you, correct? We laugh about it now. I say, Bo, I'm so glad you're a drug addict because it changed my life. And how Absolutely. did that happen? 
Um, learning, first of all, uh, about the pain associated with people that use, probably, first thing that comes to mind. And then learning the dynamics of family history, drugs and alcohol, how much of it's in the genes, how much of it is choice. Learned all about that. I stayed in Al-Anon for six years. That was life-changing. Um, it was a, a gift to um, Nikki, but her nickname is Bo. But it was a gift to me because I, I had alcohol. Um, both my grandfathers were alcoholic. And um, I learned how, even though I did not know them, um, the dynamics of the family and the family of origin affects us. And it was a, a real interesting learning experience. So you've not always had a life of the President's Club in real estate. No. Um, you found your father dead at the age of 11. I did. And, and how it, did... it was a farm accident. Uh, we were living up in Polk City. And um, it was Easter weekend. And my mom and, and brother and sister were in making the church bulletins wow. at our local church. And I was home with dad. And he didn't come home as he was supposed to, so I went out to the field to find him. And uh, I didn't realize that was age 11, and um, it took me till the age of 42 to realize how much um, trauma and um, those hard experiences as children affect us as adults. I had no idea how much I was affected until I heard a radio program, a talk show, and it was life-changing. I was in my car in and, and, uh, Mendrith Meyer Clinic out of Dallas, Texas, um, gave all the characteristics of children, um, adults, that come out of uh, trauma as children. And um, I was textbook. So called my doctor and um, turned my life around within a year. Praise God. Yeah, it was awesome. It was one of those. I had to pull over on the interstate 35 going north up by Casey's. I remember it like it was yesterday. And it was over 24 years ago. You were still a single mom at that time. I was time. a single mom, yeah. And it really just set the rest of your course of your life to be on a new new path, correct? It did. I um, That was in the fall of um, 1993. By New Year's Eve, 1993, I sat down for the first time and wrote goals for my life. I had never processed that that might even be a good thing. And um, one of my goals was to become a realtor. And by um, April of 1994, I started my real estate business. And you've been so, very successful. God's good. Man, All the time. You show up, time. Yep. <laughs> yeah, you show up with a good attitude, you know, and, and he'll take care of the rest. Amen. And Debbie Moon, you've you've not had the life of luxury your whole entire life as well. We have the two Debs here on the yeah, show today. I feel like my sister Deb, my other sister Deb, my brother Larry. <laughs> <laughs> but Deb, you um, have been married 30... 36 years. 36 years. And marriage was not always good to you because you are in a uh, multicultural marriage, correct? correct. And marrying a, an African-American or a... Uh, 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 black Latino descendant or black in the, uh, as we call him <laughs> <laughs> back in the 70s was not a cool thing not at all and um, how did you overcome those obstacles so quickly I mean I, or was it a long process were you walking with God in those years not not in the beginning no no it was just that um, I knew that I had felt true met true love um, my passion and my love for my husband, not at that time, at the beginning, but it was so strong that there was nobody could knock us down. Now I realize that it was God working in our life, but then I didn't know that. Um, and we were discriminated against for um, a lot of different, on both sides, both my husband's side and my side. It was a tough world back then. Not. And the discrimination was probably cross-culture, right. family-induced, friend-induced, work-induced. I mean, it didn't just come from one source. No. In fact, my family had disowned me. Um, my Lord. Yeah, my brother. And, and we're, we've grown through Christ. We've grown through all of this. But uh, my brother even went out and tried to slice the tires on my husband's car. And I'm like, my husband th at that point was a bodybuilder. He was not somebody you wanted to really mess with. So, <laughs> But we've grown through that. And I, I think it's all, I, 
after we, um, I had a baby out of wedlock, which my, is my daughter that you met. And once we, um, everybody found out that she was going to be born, the baby changed the whole world for everybody. So, but God, but God, but yep. God. <laughs> God can take everything bad and make it, but good, you know, Absolutely. I don't, I don't care what Beyonce sings about. Oh, you yeah. Know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, and, and you also are self-employed. I am uh, self-employed. Uh, you have rag and mop cleaning. Rag mop cleaning. Yeah. And, um, you were sharing with me before we came on the air that this is your third time around with it. So it's kind of like the, the Trinity, the father, son, the Holy ghost stepping yeah, amen. in <laughs> and, and, um, you put prayer into your, your ministry and into your cleaning as well. I mean, the, the people that you, whose lives you come into are affected by change and everything you do. You were telling us you've had your hips replaced, your knees replaced, your elbows replaced. I mean, <laughs> you have a bionic woman. Here. <laughs> just my hips but they want to replace other parts <laughs> but god has been good to you with your 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 business it, um you've come through this marriage struggle this biracial struggle and and the the cleaning business struggle of being a, an entrepreneur but by god as a woman of god um and overcoming those obstacles to be the successful entrepreneur that you are today yep, hallelujah <laughs> amen would you say um, now I heard Deb say that, uh, she was, you know, working on the, the church bulletins. Did you always grow up in the church? I did. I'm still a member of the church that I grew up in. My Lord. Yeah. Left and came back, left and came back, but we're there. I was married in the church. My husband's a member of the church. We have been there since the church started when I was around four or five. And did you go through church hurt in your marriage in the beginning? Um, Ask me the question again. I'm not understanding. Did you go through some church hurt in the beginning of your marriage? Um, or were they there for you? No, I wasn't there in the beginning of my marriage. Okay. Um, we joined afterwards. All right. And yeah. And my husband, they became attached to my husband, even though I was a lifelong member. Funny how that happens. Yeah, it is. Well, men are the, are the striving force. Now I will say Deb Stucker, her husband is an introvert. She's the extrovert of their family. He would be like stay at the, the, the TV and if Deb somebody's at the door for you, isn't he? The, but solid as a rock. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. And spiritually and and you know the old um don't say anything unless you can say something wise or whatever. That's kind of his he not much comes out of his mouth, but when he does he's he's wise. Oh yeah, I remember coming and talking yeah. to him when he was mowing or something like that, and he was like pondering. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Mm. <laughs> you yeah. Know? So, you know, we're talking about women <laughs> overcoming obstacles, becoming the women of God that God has purpose for them to do today. Here, at the view from the view. We'll take your questions at eight five five two four four zero zero seven seven. You can call in. We are live, or you can also hit Bob on the blog. I don't know how to do that part of the show, but. He'll take care of you there. We have Deb Stucka and Debbie Moon Davis today with us and talking about the purpose that God has given us, the, the, the purpose driven life, the, the, the purpose that God has given us, but women in ministry and women overcoming the obstacles, uh, to become the successful entrepreneur, the women of the household that they are. And, um, Deb, uh, Stucka, I, I don't know if I could have looked at my, my parent deceased and walked out a sane person. I don't know if I could have done that. I wasn't. <laughs> I, I didn't either. I, um, I really don't think I did. But I didn't. When when um, dysfunction is the only thing you know, it's the only thing I knew. It's the only... I, I didn't know that um, um, vomiting every time I tried to leave the house as a 24-year-old what I didn't know what was wrong with me. Um, I, I didn't know the um, post-traumatic stress disorder existed. Mm. I didn't know um, that tension constantly and playing bad tapes all the time. For me, that was normal. So um, when that's all you know, it changes things. My Lord. We're getting ready to take a break here at The View from the Pew. Remember, we're taking your questions on the blog with Bob, but also at 855-244-0077. If you have a question for Deb or Deb or my other sister, Deb, we'll be glad to take it today here at The View from the Pew. We hope you're tuning in each and every Monday through Friday. Um, I'm here Wednesday and Thursday, but we'll be right back after this. Stay tuned. 
If you choose to obey the power of sin, it leads to death. If you choose to obey obedience, it leads to righteousness. Forgiveness is just the beginning of life in Christ. God wants us to live for Him now. And because of Jesus Christ, the gospel was preached, and you and I are blessed today because of Abraham. Did you know that? We're blessed. Experience Truth, 99.3 FM. Yes, now your favorite programs on Webcast One Live can all be watched and listened to on any Android or Apple device. Your phone, tablet, or iPad. Yes, your favorite shows on Webcast One Live are available live or on podcast wherever you go. Let me introduce to you some of our great shows. Shalom. Every week on Understanding the World with Rabbi David Kaufman, we'll talk about issues in the Middle East, issues related to the Jewish tradition and religious traditions in general, and keep you up to date on exactly what's going on around the world. You may know some of the story, but you haven't heard all of the story until you've heard it on Understanding the World with Rabbi David Kaufman and our special guests we have on every week. Like, right now. Did you feel anything? Yeah. You did? I was dealing with some back issues um, due to the depression that I did, and right now they're gone. I have a sickness called Lyme disease. It was really bad, and I could have died up of it, but um, God healed me of it. <laughs> So when you want to watch your favorite Webcast One program, remember, there's an app for that. You know, there's an app for that. From the Remax Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. Whether you're 10, 25, 50, 80 years old and beyond, everyone needs to live within their means. I'm Tom Coates with Consumer Credit of America. For almost a quarter of a century, we've helped people of all ages learn to manage their personal finances to benefit them far into the future. When problems arise, we've got the experience you need to make those debt problems go away. Got financial problems? Call Consumer Credit of America. We are back here at The View from the Pew, reminding everybody to come out December 11th, Wednesday night at Morningstar Baptist Church, 3200 Lincoln Avenue, just south of Hickman on 32nd. That was Kim Lewis, who will be ministering for Christmas in Des Moines, also with Andre Crittenden, with uh, Senior Pastor Alex Crawford there at Morningstar Baptist Church. We're back with Deb and Deb and my other sister Deb here at The View from the Pew today, and we're talking about women of God overcoming the obstacles to become the successful entrepreneurs, but the women of Christ that we are called to be. And Debbie Moon Davis... Uh, we talked a little bit about your husband in the, the first segment there, and um, he has not always had it easy. No, he, he, was, he was hospitalized, almost pronounced dead. or A couple of times in his life, once before me, but about oh, 12, 13 years ago. And how did this happen? I mean, was this during your marriage? The, the... It was. It was during our marriage. And my husband's a very simple man. Um, he likes to keep life simple. But when he turned 50, uh, that was traumatic for him. And within that week, his brother was pronounced with um, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, and he was mm-hmm. also diagnosed with hepatitis C. And because he's uh, a very simple man, he, it became overwhelming to him. And he went into severe depression and anxiety. I had never dealt with anything like this before, so I didn't know the signs. Um, I've learned so much through that, but um, he ended up in mental health for 
over two years, um, has went through 60 different shock treatment sessions. Mm. Um, but it was a learning now that we reflect back on it. I believe that it was God that did all this, you know, God throws rocks at you and when you don't pay attention, then he throws a brick. (laughs) <laughs> and uh, he threw a brick at my husband, and, and I think he threw it at both of us But because I learned through that. But uh, the brick knocked him down. We went through that. And even though we had Christ in our life then, we really have Christ in our life now because my husband was near death. And um, the the doctors told me, he, they said, he's going to have to be on medication for the rest of his life. And my husband doesn't even take aspirin. He doesn't drink. He's a all-natural kind of guy. And... Uh, I looked at him and I said, our insurance has run out. They say you're going to be on medicine. You have to somehow find it within you to get well, or I have to put you in a home. And um, he said that night when I left, and this is where I'm going to get emotional, he um, fell to his knees and he prayed to God and God healed him. He came home two weeks later um, and he, it took, you know, it took us a while to get him off the medication and get back, but our life has truly changed Amen. and he's not the man I married. He is the rock who I lean to. I mean, I wouldn't be where I am today without him. Amen. So would you say that that life changing experience was a total reaffirmation to him that God is good, that God is real, oh, that God is a living being. With a, without a doubt. And you have to have him tell you the story. I mean, I witnessed it, the whole thing. And my my family, um, they will tell you today that he's not the man that I married. I know he's not the man that I married. Thank God. Hallelujah. <laughs> um, because he is, I mean, he's there. He's my partner. He's my soulmate. He's my everything. Amen. And I know you're I, listening, honey. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> she just gave you a shout out. <laughs> you big old buck. <laughs> I told you guys we have church on the show. Amen. I'm gonna start yeah, crying. Yeah. <laughs> I got to look away. Yeah. Look away from the light. <sighs> Praise God. You know, um, God meets us where we are, Debbie. Yeah, yes, he, he meets does. us where we are. And he, I don't say this lightly, but he never gives us more than what we can handle. Right. And he knew that you could walk that out yeah. with your husband at that time. Otherwise, you could have been like 70% of the other women and just said, scrap this. You're in mental health, dude. I'm walking <laughs> out and, and traded in a marriage. But you what, were there for the longevity. And what my husband said to me, and he said this to his cousin who was through this. And Herbie, if you're listening, you'll remember this. Um, he said, I know that Debbie will always be there when the smoke clears. And, he, and I will be. Amen. When I my marriage vows mean everything to me. So no matter what we go through, and we've been through the fire, we've been through the flood, we've been through sickness and health for better, for worse, and we're there for each other. Amen. And that's why you have your business. It's gone three times and come back. <laughs> Amen. <It's a> <laughs> <Holy> <laughs> it Ghost. is, yes. <laughs> oh, oh, wow. oh my gosh, I'm feeling for clouds. <laughs> and and Deb Stucka, you know, you have um, a special needs child. Which, I do. which has walked it out and and you've been getting report after report of victories. Tell us about Amen. Josh a little bit. Joshua um, gave birth to a son almost 35 years ago. Um, has been 35 years ago, actually. And uh, Josh had six birth defects when he was born. And um, I, I know now that he was a gift. And I could barely get off the couch the first three months. And after that, um, it was slow functioning, 12 surgeries, back and forth to Iowa City. Um, He's developmentally disabled and legally blind. But um, I, I know now that God takes care of his own. And he... Okay, here we go. <laughs> God he is good. I, he just showing up every day, and God will take care of it. And He's done that for Josh. And I love this story. Um, Josh needed a job about six years ago, and one a very dear friend of mine. We crossed paths in the eighties. Her son is the manager of a large store up in Ankeny. And I called my friend Shirley, and I said, Shirley, I need to call your son, Tim, who manages this big store, and ask him for a job for Josh. 
and uh, Josh had to go through all the traditional applications, drug screening, um, all of it, and he made it through. Tim hired him. That was six years ago, and I was told three weeks ago that he's the one one of the best men that um, this store has in the receiving department, and um, it's just exactly where uh, Josh is supposed to be. He has a music ministry at his little church. He plays three or four music only plays a saxophone that'll bring tears to your eyes and um several guitars i don't even know how many guitars the guy owns and uh, he shows up at his open bible church up in ankeny every sunday and is a big part of their um, music ministry and the hoot of it is josh can't drive because he's legally blind but god uh, he purchased a home on third street in ankeny and his church is right across the street wow yeah so he gets to um, have that support from that local church. I think I said earlier, God meets you where you are. I mean, oh, to give you a church right across the, the street. street yeah. You know? When you can't drive. Yeah. I always say a church is alive. It's worth a drive. I used to drive from Ankeny to Cornerstone, you know, yeah. five times a week, but right across the street. Hallelujah. Yeah. I'm there you like, go. Hallelujah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you think that um, that that test, that trial was given to you because God was testing you to see what you could stand the test of time with, with Josh's inabilities or I hate the word disability, you know, um, that he's not disabled because <laughs> he has every ablement. Mm. It's just that he has some obstacles that are put in front of him, you know, his sight and so on and so forth. No, I don't think it was that. What was it? How's that? And that that's what I'm asking you. Do what? I have an opinion? No, yeah. I, do. <laughs> what, I mean, what, um, I, I, I have grown to believe that God allowed it. He didn't make, God doesn't make handicapped kids. Doesn't he, make mistakes. he doesn't make mistakes. He doesn't, but he does allow things. And I think he allowed it. Otherwise, there probably would have been other mountains I would have had to have gone around. I think he allows us, you know, just keep going around mountain after mountain until we learn things. And there were things I needed to learn, and God allowed it. And I then could make choices whether to make it a, a good thing or a bad thing. And But by the grace of God, Josh and I were able to to turn it, you know, turn it into a good thing. I mean, he's he's been able to minister to people. So, um, did that answer your question? Yeah. Kind were you of. were you a patient person before all this happened? Patient. Um, I don't know. I don't have any idea. I guess. Um, I'm. I don't know if I'm patient even yet. Tell you the truth. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know. I, I have. Know. A, I have a dear friend that um, her daughter is. Um, and I'm going to say the incorrect name. It's not uh, Dur Dervets, Dervets syndrome. Tourette's. Tourette. Not, not Tourette's. No. Oh, Dervets. No. It's, like, no. it's like an autism. Um, it's like a form of autism sure. or epilepsy. It's called Dervets syndrome, I believe it's called. And um, the, uh, she was always a, a very um, outgoing individual, very active, and, and went to school and passed the CPA, you know, high marks, high honors, and so on and so forth, and um, had uh, had lost, I'm going to say 200 pounds, but it's not 200 pounds, she'll scream me down if I say that, lost a tremendous amount of weight in, or early on in her life, but um, the the syn syndrome that her, her child had endured was brought on by the inoculation of um, our inoculations oh, that we receive you know as uh, youngsters mm -hmm. um for mumps and measles and so on and mm -hmm. so forth but um and now their their child is 22 23 years old has the the mental ability of a three-year-old four-year-old so um i said mm -hmm. to her you know did god give you patience with this 22 year old child i mean you're you're going through adulthood mm -hmm. with a childhood mm -hmm. individual you know and um she said more patience more than you patience. will ever know yeah. you know and um so when you say that you know god doesn't make mistakes i don't believe that he does make mm -hmm. mistakes um I, I think that he does throw a rock right. at you like mm -hmm. you said earlier yeah. debbie you know and it, and it's for us to either pick that rock up and throw it back or pick it up <laughs> and say i'm going to build something with this and I think that that's both what you've, you know, I'm going to start crying now. So <laughs> I did find it right. It, it is, you're right. It's Dravet. D-R-A-V-E-T. Yeah. It's a severe epilepsy in infancy. Mm -hmm. And, and, um, you know, the, I, I don't know. 
I've been blessed. I'll just tell you. I mean, I'm a mess, but I've been mm-hmm. blessed. You know, I I feel as though that I've had a very hard life sometimes. But when you look at somebody else's life and the trials and the tribulations that they've come through, Christ, mm-hmm. my life is nothing. Right. You know, absolutely nothing. I mean, I don't know if I could say um, if I found my father dead, I don't know what I would have done. I mean, I, I would have been in a mental institution, you know, mm-hmm. I would have freaked out um, if if uh, my loved one would have been uh, on death's bed. Um, I probably would have said, okay, is the life insurance in place? Yeah. <laughs> Who's the beneficiary? You know, well, I, I probably would have <laughs> to make sure it was all clean cut and clear, you know? So um, I'm just saying, I don't know if I have that strength and God calls us, you know, to, to mm-hmm. call on him, let him be that mm-hmm. strong tower. And you both have stood that test of time. You've, you've called on that strong tower to walk it out, you know, and um, to be the, the business entrepreneur, successful woman that you are. And, and stand the, the test of, t- of time, but God, in God, through God, in faith has brought you through those, those obstacles. Um, Debbie, going back to you real quick, has your husband now overcome these obstacles? Has he been able to get back to work or is he oh, still yeah. walking? Um, He's wonderful. I mean, he's well, we know the, he is because you're <laughs> you know. <laughs> um, yeah, and I'm glad that we went through what we went through. But yeah, he's um, um, my husband drives a concrete truck for a living. He couldn't do that if he was suffering from depression or anxiety. He uh, is a driver trainer for the company that he works with. Um, I believe they love him. They reach out to him all the time. He's um, 61, going to be 62. All right. And he's told him he doesn't want to retire. And Look they're going to the let glow him on stay. Her face. <laughs> she is like in love. That's like it. The love yeah, it yeah, it yeah. is. It's great to be in love for 36 years. Amen. God oh. is good. We're talking to Debbie Moon Davis and Deb Stucker today. Women of God overcoming the obstacles in their life in God, through God, but God. Right here at The View from the Pew. If you have any questions, call us at 855 244 0077. We will be right back after this. Tune in, turn on, and turn it up. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. I'm Brian Leach, owner and general manager of Service Legends. I brought a long couple of the uh, home comfort heroes. (laughs) Hi, I'm Tammy Wells. I am Nick Wondershot. I'm administrative manager. I'm the senior technician. I'm Service Legends. It seems like every good thing, when you feel it to the bone that it's good, there's a lot of hard work put behind it. You just, I, I don't think that you can fake it and have it turn out good. You know, if we seem like, okay, that's just weird, it's just a furnace, why would you believe so deeply in a furnace? It's not just that, you know, we want to show the world that you can have good service. Yeah, I mean, it's got to be, it's your home. You know, it's, it's built into our daily trainings, it's built into our culture. Um, that we're going to do whatever it takes to have each client say they love us, period. That's why we spend all the hours in the training that we do. And if we guarantee it's going to be a good experience for you or else it's free, what type of work do you think we're going to do? (laughs) There is a guarantee. Temperature selection guarantee, fixed rider it's free guarantee, comfort guarantee, best value guarantee, all of these guarantees hold us accountable to ensuring that we exceed your expectations. And if for whatever reason we fail and we can't make it right, We guarantee all of those guarantees with a 100% money back guarantee. I mean, if you don't think that your technician can fix it right, are you going to say that to a client? No. (laughs) You don't have to worry about having a technician come to your house. We drug test, background check all of our team members. We put safe people in your home. Each and every one of our service techs, 400 hours a year in training. You tell it the minute they walk in the door. They know what they're doing, they've done their homework, and they actually truly care about what you want. Because at the end of the day, you're the person that makes sure I have a job. They're going to be listening. They're going to want to know what your challenges are. Then they're going to come and give you options, and and you get to choose. If I'm there to help and I make it easy and painless, I did my job right that day. Well, when it comes to your comfort, safety, and your family, you know, you don't necessarily go buy the most expensive, but you get the most bang for your buck. Oh, it's worth it, because there's a lot of people that will find a way to get it to work right now, and then leave, and then come back, charge you again, and, and the cycle just repeats itself. So when I'm out there looking at the furnace, I want to find why it failed the day. How can we change the part today with something that you're not going to have to worry about? Is it worth changing the part today? I mean, you can put a lot of money into a furnace. I can fix parts all day. There's good job security in that for me. But is it the right thing for you? I get a lot of the phone calls of after the technicians are there. They're just in awe. They're like, wow, you guys are great. I mean, I don't even know what to say. You guys are great. Everything you did was perfect. It was great. (laughs) 
Keep going though, I like this. <laughs> Just give us a try. I'm gonna take all the risk. I've got the time to make this right. I've got the support to make it right. Just check us out. And if you don't see the value in what we do. I mean, Fixed Rider, it's free or 100% money back. Not said. We're back here at The View from the Pew and also 99.3 KTIA. I want you to join me tomorrow here at The View from the Pew at 3 p.m. when my special guest will be Dr. Dory McKnight and also the one, the only, Sheila Ray Charles. Uh, Sheila Ray Charles is going to be talking about Behind the Shades. We're also going to be talking about Cover Girls in the Church again. Uh, Sheila will be joining us live from San Francisco. But uh, she'll be talking about the life, the trials, the tribulations of being the daughter of um, uh, musical artist, Ray Charles. So tune in tomorrow at three o'clock here at the view from the pew and also 99.3. We're here today with my live guests, friends and family, Debbie and Debbie and my other sister, Debbie and Bob Montserrat. And we're really glad you guys are alive. We are, we, we are <laughs> glad you're live. Bob, do you have any questions for them? You always have some, some thought provoking <laughs> question or something. Um, well, um, that was good. Yeah. And I was also thinking, well, I guess I can't help but notice that, um, you know, when you go through traumatic experiences, you're giving the credit to, you know, God for doing, uh, because we can't get ourselves out of these things. We can't really learn things, and it's all Him that does it. I think that's the main thing, is that uh, what I hear is that you always were close to the Lord, and then when you went through trial, of course, you cry out to Him, and even when things are going better, we still you know, uh, reach out to him in the good time and in the not so good time. And I guess the thing is, what, we're, what I'm hearing is that uh, we don't have good days or bad days. We just have uh, days full of grace either way. And so we have grace when we're happy and grace when we're persevering. And that's what I'm hearing. You're 100% correct. Mm -hmm. Did you hear that? I heard that. Okay, mm -hmm. I was just wondering. That's and why I, I brought it up. I felt that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know, uh, Debbie, um, Deb Stucker, did you grow up in the church then? I did. Um, denominational or non-denominational? Yeah, in an evangelical free church up in Polk City. Okay. I did. And Debbie Moon, did you grow up in the church? Yep, Westover Baptist. Okay. <clears throat> and is that where you are now? Yes. See, now, Bob, this is something. Now, Bob, did you grow up in the church? Yes. Now, see, this is something I cannot relate to because we grew up in turmoil, okay? We grew up in the Gulf <laughs> Country Club, so we grew up with the mucky of the muck, you know? So, uh, you know... That's not bad, though. It, well, it was because, you know, you were always facing an obstacle. You just didn't know it was obstacle. Yeah, but then you weren't messed up by, you know, all kinds of religion. No, you were just either. really messed up. <laughs> 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 you know, um, I... I you know, uh, we'll say that I was a product of a divorce and, you know, um, love my parents to death. Um, you know, but I don't know that, I don't know how my life would have been affected by change if Christ would have been there because I don't know it any differently than what it was. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you, you ladies both can say that God was present there all the time, 24 seven. So you can always say, I, I got to call on the name of the Lord. The, God was my strong tower in the very beginning. You know, you could say he brought me through uh, a biracial marriage. You can say um, that he brought you through the hardships of losing your father at a very young life or through the um, single motherhood, you know, and um, I can't say that. Yeah, but I, I have a know, question about that. That since you brought it up, I'm, let, I'm yeah. letting you talk. You have the floor. Get ready to turn his mic off. <laughs> <laughs> I guess my question is, even though you were in the faith early on, is it different now than it was back then? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. Okay, so you see there, so the thing was, even for them, even though they were in the faith early, and you brought up that you weren't, they have seen tremendous change in their life and their belief system, even though they knew the Lord early on, he revealed himself in a huge way, and you feel intimately closer to him than you ever did before. Right. Well, as a, for me, as a child, I was there because that's what I was supposed to be doing. That's mm -hmm. what my parents said I was supposed to be doing. I followed the format of the church. You know, I went before and mm -hmm. got baptized as a child. I didn't know what it meant, even though I went through the classes. Mm -hmm. um, and then as a teenager, I strayed away from church. My parents went through a rough time. They're still together. have been married for 57 years, and I'm blessed they're still alive. They're still together. Hallelujah. But they, yeah, mm -hmm. but they had... They had 
trials and tribulations too. So we moved away and then I came back to my church as an adult. And then I learned what Christianity was about, what God was really about and how he's important in my life. Yeah. See, I don't see that as being much different, much right, different. than you. I don't either. I don't. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, we, well, we had religion in our family and it was, you know, you, you go to the golf country club, you sit down, you celebrate, <laughs> um, you have, you have communion in a different aspect, yeah, yeah. you know, and it, it was much different. It really was, you know, and, and some people could say they, they have religion. You can religiously drink a beer every Sunday at 4 PM. That's religion, <laughs> you know, or you could say you have religion by you, you pay God homage for everything that happens in your life. Good, bad, and, you know, bringing you out of indifferences. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I can't say, I can say that I am from a broken home. I can't, I can't say that I had a hard life. I can't say that, you know, well, my brother was kind of foolish, you know, I, I did have a brother that was a drug addict, you know, had a, he was, he, he, he had a retail business from Chicago to Des Moines to Kansas city to Omaha, (laughs) (laughs) um, traveling salesman, you know, uh, of sorts. Um, but God brought him out. God met him oh. at first assembly when pastor Crabtree was there. And, um, mm. my, my, my dad bribed him to go to church. He's like, I'll give you X amount of money. You come six Sundays, six Wednesdays. And God met him on the sixth Sunday night, you know, and wow, that's a, a magic testimony. number for you, isn't it? <laughs> it must, it must be, you know? So, um, but I, I can't say that I always got to call on God in my entire life because I didn't. You know, I remember Mm -hmm. we went to church on Christmas and Easter's and and I remember like in third or fourth grade asking my mother, why is our name on this plaque on the wall? And she said, it's because we give them a lot of money to put our name by the stained glass Mm -hmm. window, you know, and then going through uh, communion and them dressing us up in the white robe and getting or not communion baptism. And I thought it was a KKK. I was like, okay, they made us recite all these things, walk down to this big tub of water. And before I got to the tub of water and it was a Christ disciples church, I was like, whoa, um, there's one black person that goes to my school and there's no black people in this church. I am out of here. I went stripped back out into my underwear, into my clothes and ran home and sat in my parents like, you missed out on your first baptism. I'm like, we never go to church anyway. You know, come on. I mean, what is this about that? We, I had no relationship, mm-hmm. you know, except for twice a year. And I did, still didn't know what it was about. And you're saying relationship it, with the Lord. Right. 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 Except I was just going to jump in Come on. when Debbie commented on something, what through what, what went through my mind was in our um, growing up, it was about we don't drink, we don't dance, we don't go to movies, and we don't run with the people that do, but it was not about relationship. See, and it that was makes that, it the same that, as what you're talking Yeah, it about. does, and, it. and it was called legal. It's called legalism, as I learned reading a book um, 20 years ago, my husband introduced me a book to a book called emotion or no see that one was basic christianity classic christianity and it talked about the dysfunction in the church and how um it's if it's about the rules then it's not true christianity mm. so mm, mm, there's a lot mm. of freedom in jesus well, there you go yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and right knows that church now. Now, right? <laughs> oh, I am. i'm missing my hand and be right now <laughs> Would you say, uh, Debbie Moon, that, you know, uh, in walking your life out through Christ, that he has given you the blessings that's been b- bestowed upon you then that, I mean, he's, he's looked at you and said, Hey, you've stood the test of time. Well done, faithful servant, <laughs> you know, because I mean, you've come this, this full circle with your business three times now. And, and three is the number, you know, the Trinity, yeah. as they say, numbers, the seven is the number of perfection or isn't that what they say? Completion. Completion. Um, so, you know, now you've got the Trinity in your business here. And um, uh, have your blessings always come from God? Yeah. I mean, that I, without question. All that's right. my faith. It was a test. It was. Yeah, that's my faith. Yeah. <laughs> ding, 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 you yeah. passed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and, you know, this time around, I know this is where I'm supposed to be. Um, he wouldn't keep bringing me back if it's not where I'm supposed to be. And I, you and I talked about this. I think we all did earlier. You have to be careful what you ask God for. That's right. Because I asked and I've received and my business is growing by leaps and bounds. Um, and I know he's not going to give me more than I can handle, but sometimes I question, how am I going to do all this? How am I going to put it in the schedule? Where are the people coming from that, because I don't hire just anybody. You know, say I say so. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I'm in people's homes. Your daughter blessed me. Yeah, she, she did. <laughs> she came into my rental property. I said, I called you up. I said, Debbie, 
these people are moving out. I need to clean within four hours. What could you do? She's like, I got two. They'll be right there. Yeah. They got you. <laughs> We're getting ready to take a break here. We're here at The View from the View and also 99.3 KTIA FM. If you have any questions, call us or hit Bob on the blob. I can't do that. Blog. Blog. Is that correct? Blob. Chat. Blog. Blog. Chat. That's easier. Chat. Chat. Anyway, <laughs> we'll be right back after this. Tune in, turn on, turn it up in Jesus' name here at 99.3 KTIA and The View from the View. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. If Tom Coates from Consumer Credit of America was your personal webmaster, Tom would filter out all bad debt emails. If Tom was your mailman, you'd never get any debt reduction junk mail. If Tom Coates was a lineman, he'd block any phone calls offering to reduce your credit card debt. Hi, I'm Tom Coates with Consumer Credit of America, and we're still your best choice for credit counseling. We're local, we're accountable, and we can do more. You make the call when the time's right for you. When it comes to competition, there really is none for Consumer Credit of America. Get away from us, you mean old credit card. We don't have any more money. We're in trouble now. Save us! Help! Somebody save us! Somebody help! Help! Save us! <laughs> Hi, I'm Tom Coates from Consumer Credit of Des Moines. If your credit card's a little too animated, give us a call. Hooray! We're saved! Consumer Credit, you're our hero! If you choose to obey the power of sin, it leads to death. If you choose to obey obedience, it leads to righteousness. Forgiveness is just the beginning of life in Christ. God wants us to live for him now. And because of Jesus Christ, the gospel was preached, and you and I are blessed today because of Abraham. Did you know that? We're blessed. Experience Truth, 99.3 FM. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. We're back here at The View from the Pew and 99.3 KTIA, reminding you to tune in tomorrow where my guest will be Sheila Ray Charles, the daughter of Ray Charles, and also Dr. Dory McKnight. We're going to talk about Behind the Shades and also Cover Girls in the Church. We're here at Women's Month, December. I thought, you know, we're going to devote the month to, to the women of the church, the body of Christ, because they are a blessing to, to the body. And... Um, during this Christmas season, we know that a lot of women serve in the church and serve the church. And so I just thought this would be, since it was no shave November, we'll just devote December to the women. So deal with it. Thank you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> so Deb uh, stuck out with your real estate business, um, overcoming the obstacles of a, a child that was drug addiction, overcoming one that had special needs, um, disabilities, whatever you would like to call it. Um, being in a marriage of how many years now? Twenty. Twenty. We did. And and your husband and you are very active in your your church yeah. life. Yep. Um, you're both studiers and doers of the word. I know that you both read. Every both, day. I, mm. you know, I'm so glad they invented the candle. <laughs> oh, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> the page turning thing just was too mind boggling for me. <laughs> Bob, don't say a word. <laughs> it just you know. Uh, uh, I think it was, I think they were, they should have probably labeled me ADHD or something in school back in the day because they tested me and said that, um, math was my deficiency, but they stuck me in a reading. What was that called? Reading room. Writing and arithmetic. Yes. You know, oh, remedial, 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 remedial reading. Yeah. Okay. And now, now it's like reading is my horrible subject, you know, and math is my forte. So I have to make an admission. I was at remedial reading when I was young. I can't believe mm -hmm. it. Yep. I can't believe it. See, don't you feel better now? I do. <laughs> but Deb, uh, stuck in, in you and your business, um, mm -hmm. I know that you put God first. Um, mm -hmm. We were talking that um, before the show that, you know, um, you've had some tests and trials and tribulations with different closings and so on and so forth. But you, mm -hmm. you put God into the ordeals in which I do. you transact your business, correct? I do. Yeah. I, um, I, I get to work with, I call him rookie realtors, New, newbies coming in. It's interesting. And, Years ago, I had a conversation with one young man coming into the business, and I looked at him and I said, Sander, if you don't know Jesus is in control, 
this business will make you crazy. And uh, did he get out? He he ended up leaving the business. I'm not exactly sure why, but our paths crossed last summer, more than what's that, 16 years later, and they were walking with the Lord and active in their church at that time. And and um, I I really believe that. I don't know how actually anybody in business, especially self-employed, I guess, um, without knowing Jesus is, you know, God's in control, I, I, it'd make me nuts. So I just give that away and try to make it simple and stupid. If you could say anything to young married couples right now, coming from a woman who was a single mom for so many years and now has been married umpteen years, what would you say to young married couples? I would probably coach them to find ways to be more aware of how their family of origin affects their current family. I I think learning that because you can't always go forward until you look back and and learn from it. And I think there are dynamics. I, I know there are dynamics in families that go on. Uh, such as alcohol abuse of great grandfathers that have affected families, you know, whatever the dysfunction, it doesn't have to be alcohol. Um, all the behaviors are the same. And, and so those dysfunctions are carried through generations and you can't fix it if you don't know it's there. Amen. And so understanding the emotionally healthy um, spirituality instead of trying to, there's just a lot of, unhealthy emotional stuff going on within the church, I think, and within families that people don't even know about because that's all they know. Do you and your husband pray every day together? Um, I cannot say that we, I silent prayers. Yes. We have meditation. We sit in our, we have chairs and sit and meditate. I can't say we do, right? Just Sorry to say, Just I know, question. but I, do you, do I, I you pray to, for your husband every day? Oh, absolutely. My whole, my, my day is one continual prayer. Usually I, I'm, um, I have learned, I guess if there's one thing I've learned to listen to the Holy Spirit, I that, know that's that right. quiet, that quiet voice, he, he doesn't yell at us. He talks very quietly. Oh, he's quietly. yelling at me. You're going 103 <laughs> on I-80. Yeah. There's a cop at oh, Davenport. No. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, can I tell you a quick story? Come on. Oh, this one happened this last, um, it happened in August of 2012, riding my motorcycle, coming down 415 um, behind my husband, and he had his cute sister with him on his Harley, and I was riding behind him, and I went, that is so sad my sister-in-law doesn't have a, her own man on a Harley. So we introduced Linda to Don. I didn't tell him I'm going to share this. I'll, they'll have to listen. <laughs> so we know Don from our church. He rides motorcycles with us. And Don had been, um, his, his wife was deceased for three or four years. And Linda had been divorced for 10. And both of them healthy, happy, functioning, single people. And we introduced them, and it was God that said to me on that bike that day, without a doubt, to call Don and ask Don if he wants to date Linda. Wow. And it was just like God was on the back of my bike. See, there is a Harley God. (laughs) There's a Harley God, I'm telling you. And he said it to me, and that was in August, September. They were married in January. And in May, my here I go, crying. My cute sister-in-law was diagnosed with lymphoma. And now she has an awesome husband Amen. to help her walk through this because I don't know how she would have done it without Jesus Amen. and Don. Amen. So we're singing Don's praises too. Yeah. All right. Well, I know when I asked you about a month ago to come on the show, I know you prayed about it. And I, I want to thank you for coming out today. Thanks. Thank you for fun. blessing me and my life. And, you know, my kids. I'm glad our paths crossed again. Amen. Down at Valley Junction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Debbie fun. Moon, I know you're praying for your husband every day because the glow, I got to tell you, Mr. Moon <laughs> Davis, Mr. <laughs> Davis, uh, the glow that she had here in the studio, she is beaming east to west right now. <laughs> and um, you've been a blessing. Thank you so much for Thank coming you. in and sharing your testimony. May God bless and prosper your business that you this will not be a fourth mm-hmm. time, that this is the third and last That's time right. that he give you the contract that you need to um, be the overcomer that you have been. 
Um, I know that you've blessed me and my rental properties in a time of emergency, time of need. If anybody needs to get a hold of you at Rag and Mop Cleaning, how can they reach you real quick? They can reach me on my cell phones with me. Now, don't call me late at night. 779-4616. Anytime. I, if you don't get me, leave a message. I'll get back to you within 24. And, and that's I 515, it, I should say. Yep. 515, correct. 515-779-4616. And I tell you, if she says something, she will I'll do, do it. it. That's the one thing you could say. And with Deb Staka, she prayed me in my first house. And I tell you, there there was no way but God. And Deb Stucker will get you in a house. Deb, how can I reach you? Awesome. Iowa Realty, Deb Stucker, 515-238-6210. Or on the web, easy to find. And they will make it happen. You both have been a blessing. Thank you so much for coming Thank in you. today to the studio. Bob, do you have anything profound to leave us with? Uh, I already asked, sent a friend request to them. So <laughs> there, there it is. There it's so go. profound. You're getting the, so the friend I'm request. I'm expecting to, to hear from them pretty soon. Okay. okay. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> I tell you what, don't miss tomorrow with Sheila, Ray, Charles, and Dr. Dory McKnight. It's been a blessing. I'm going to start tearing up. Tune in, tune on, turn up tomorrow. The View from the Pew.